Hi, this is Jake from Cabinet Solutions Design Software Technical Support Team. For today's video, we're going to be doing a simple kitchen in our software as a demonstration of its uses. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to start a new job. And it's going to ask me if I want to enter in any new standards for this job. What the standards are is you're telling the program exactly how you build the cabinets. Um, whether you start in European or face frame styling, down to what material you use, what thickness is, what your overlays are, etc. I'm not going to be going into the job standards section of this um, of our software because of the fact that that is the main learning curve of the program. It can take up to a couple hours. So first things first, we're going to go to our draw wall screen. Each one of these grid squares is 12 inches by 12 inches. So we give you a very accurate floor plan. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold down your left mouse button and click and drag that wall in whatever direction that you want it to go. And keep in mind that in the upper right hand corner of the window it tells you the actual wall size as to where it's currently at. But when you let go of your mouse you could actually type in a specific distance for that wall. I'm going to go ahead and type in 125 inches here. And I'm going to make another wall coming down here off the side. Make that be 100 inches. So that way I start with a nice L-shaped kitchen. If needed, I could always go back and click on Edit Wall. I could actually click on the wall, change the size of it, the height, the width. I can place a window, doorway, or just a general obstruction, etc., etc. So next thing we're going to do is let's place some cabinets on this wall. When I go to place these cabinets, you're going to notice that I'm going to overlap these cabinets to the wall itself and also to each other. And the reason for that is that way it squeezes out any possible small dimensions that are going to mess with my design later on down the road. Because if I just were to place this cabinet as close as possible but not actually going over it, you're going to notice that there's a little half inch degree or half inch gap between the two cabinets. That means this cabinet wall can potentially be marked as uh, exposed making it a finished end. So what I'm going to do is right click on the cabinet and then left click on the cabinet so I can move it back around. Overlap my cabinets and then click. And the program is going to snap them apart so that way they touch at that side. Let's go ahead and add in some more cabinets here. And let's do another regular base cabinet. At any point in the design if you feel like you know Let's say all of a sudden your design changed, you want to go from European to face frame. You can. Let's take a look at it really quick on our elevation screen. Right now, everything's a nice European design, but let's say I want to switch to a face frame and continue on like that for the rest of the job. We can go to standards at the top of the screen, adjust job standards, go to face frame, and apply it. And now all of our cabinets are using the, fa the factory face frame standards. Let's go ahead and keep those standards for this video. I'm going to drop in a double wide cabinet. Let's make it 48 inches. Place. Place that cabinet on the wall. And then let's cap the wall off with a small little drawer bank. Let's add in some more cabinets here. I'm going to adjust the size of this upper cabinet so it matches the one down below. And then let's add in some more uppers here so we can finish off the drawing. You'll notice that I'm making longer and longer cabinets. And the reason for that is because I could actually take this cabinet, click on it to single it out, go to Smart Fill, and then break it up into however many equal size cabinets that I want it to be broken up into. So that way you can lay out a kitchen really, really quickly. Let's go ahead and place in another upper cabinet. Again, make it 48 inches so it matches the one below. And do one last upper cabinet above that drawer bank. Like I showed you earlier, we can go to our elevation screen to take a look at the wall elevations view of our job so far. I can change walls by going down here and clicking on wall 2, etc. While I'm on this wall 2, let's take and modify these two upper ca or this upper cabinet and this base cabinet here. Let's click on the cabinet to single it out away from the rest of the job. And I'm going to break the, I'm actually going to add in a mullion right here and a mullion right here so I keep my same rails, my top, my center, and my bottom rail. 
and I'm going to make sure there's a partition behind the mullion. Uh, this one doesn't need to split anything, so I'm going to leave it all as default. Well, I'm going to remove all the splits in this one at any rate. Let's go ahead and click on the cabinet, place those two mullions. And if I go and remove my doors really quickly, you'll notice that there is a mullion or there is a partition back there. View and delete boards also confirms this. There's my partition and my second partition. Next step is we could actually go and view the assembly sheet of this cabinet. All this is very simple, but it's not exactly what I'm looking to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my openings and rollouts click on this opening and I'm going to convert it to a drawer opening and then I can add in some more center rails now I've got a drawer bank and a regular base cabinet in the same carcass let's modify this upper cabinet up here cabinet number 11 this one I'm going to add in a mullion style which is going to keep the same top rail but it's going to split that bottom rail for me and for the properties of this I am going to do some splits. I'm going to split the bottom I'm going to split my stretcher and my nailer and my back. Actually I don't even need to split the stretcher so I'll remove that. Let's go to continue place that mullion in there. Now I can go for this cabinet go to my openings and rollouts and I'm going to click on the opening number two here and now I get the option of move the top or bottom rail of selected opening or edit the opening itself. In this case I want to move the, so move the top or bottom rail of the selected opening. I want to move that bottom rail up by about, mm, let's say 10 inches. And again, all of this is done in the same carcass. You can have different elevations of those, or different different views of both those cabinets in the same carcass. They, ser they share the same top and top rail. And this is our basic 3D view of, the, of this job. I can rotate the screen around, rotate it up or down so I can make sure that everything is going to fit correctly. There's nothing overlapping, no errors or anything like that in my, in my math. And that's essentially it. I mean this is a very simple kitchen. I can enhance this 3D, which I will do, and I'll post it up at the end of this video, but I'm not going to render it during the video itself because the, the rendering time can take a little bit of time. But this is just a small sample of what our program can do. We also include job costing, elevations, a panel optimizer, um, 3D and 2D views, which you've seen. The program does contain a lot of information. Please feel free to give our tech support or our sales office a call and either one of them will be able to answer any questions that you have and get you set up with the software today.